Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and this is Birthing Pool. Wait, Knowledge Pod. This is a deck tech about Malira Pod. I did it. To give you a little bit more detail before we get into it, this is a modern deck tech designed around the card Birthing Pod. If you haven't heard of it, Malira Pod is one of the strongest decks in modern right now and surprisingly, not the most expensive one to build. Let's get to it. Speaking of expensive, let's begin with lands. This white, black, green deck runs a playset of both Misty Rainforest and Verdant Catacombs. It also runs one Godless Shrine, two Overgrown Tomb, and one Temple Garden as its shock lands. Because there aren't enough ways to make your colors, three Razor Verge Thicket and Woodland Cemetery are also added to the mix. The rest of the 23 land mana base is made up of three forests, one swamp, and three Gavany Township. The township is a great way to beat down just in case your combo doesn't go off the way you planned. Before we get to the nightmare that is the creature base, let's talk spells. Obviously we start with 4 Birthing Pod. The card is the cornerstone of the deck. Every creature in this strategy is designed to either be fetched up with Pod or sacrificed with it. If you have Pod in your opening hand, I'd say you have the advantage against most any strategy. Next up we have 3 Court of Calling. Pod needs very specific creatures in play to go off. Court of Calling lets you use your creatures as mana to get whatever you need at instant speed. As you'll see, you have a lot of options with Cord. The last spell in the deck is Abrupt Decay, classic removal spell. Great against Liliana, other pod decks, pretty much anything running any permanence under 4 mana. The creature base is where things get nuts, so this doesn't take forever, bear with me if I go through some of these a little fast. We'll start with the mainstays in the deck. A full play set of Birds of Paradise and three Noble Hierarch are very important. They let you cast a turn two Birthing Pod, which is basically the dream. Beyond that, they make great pod targets themselves. A play set of Kitchen Finks is necessary. Not only does it apply early pressure, but it also makes a great pod target, gains you life, and can make infinite life gain. We'll talk about that later. The card is just good. The only other creature in the deck with more than two copies in the main is Voice of Resurgence as a 3 of. The card is just so resilient, there's no reason not to play it. In addition, when you pot away the voice, or it gets killed, the token gives you another opportunity to start going up the pod chain again, since you can sack the token to get a 1 mana cost creature. Value. Next we'll focus on why the deck is called Malira Pod. One Malira Silvak Outcast, one Viscera Seer, and two Murderous Redcap create a hilarious infinite damage combo. You sack the Redcap to the Seer while Malira is in play. The Redcap comes back because of Persist and deals damage, but because of Malira, no counter gets placed on it, so on and so forth. You deal infinite damage. You can also gain infinite life with Kitchen Finks, as mentioned earlier. This is the deck's primary win condition. It wants to be potting into these pieces as soon as possible, so that's something to keep in mind. The rest of the deck is basically a glorified sideboard filled with one-ofs. As a matter of fact, every creature I mention from now on is a one-of, including the actual sideboard creatures. Let's bang these out quick. Viscera Seer is part of your combo, but a one-of nonetheless. Moving right along. Kasali Pride Mage is perfect to pot up if you need to destroy an opposing pod, a Blood Moon, or anything Affinity plays ever. Scavenging Ooze is here for the same reason it's in every other deck that runs green. It's Scavenging Ooze. The value on this creature is gross. Next! Shriek Maw is a kill spell. Destroy opposing pod targets before they can get potted away. Take out the Deceiver Exarch and Pestermite so Twin can't do anything. You get it. It's awesome. Spell Skite is another auto-include. Let's say you actually get your Malira combo active. The last thing you want to happen is a Slaughter Pact or a Lightning Bolt ruin all the one-sided fun you're having. Wall of Roots is just another way to accelerate and stave off aggressive decks. Just a good utility creature. Eternal Witness lets you get back anything you want from your yard. This could range from a Pod or a Corda Calling to one of your combo pieces like Malira or Viscera Seer. Orzhov Pontiff, one of the more peculiar cards in the deck, annihilates opposing Birds of Paradise, Affinity Players, or Fairy Tokens. Ranger of Aeos is great for fetching up either more mana accelerators or your combo pieces. Since it only lets you grab one converted mana cost creatures, this means that Viscera Seer is probably what you're gonna get. Almost done, guys. Linvala Keeper of Silence is a hoser against Splinter Twin. It completely shuts down the combo. Also very relevant, stops the Malira combo from going off since you can't trigger Viscera Seer's ability while she's in play. She also does a heck of a lot more, but we'd be here for a while telling you about every creature she embarrassingly destroys. 
The last creature in the main deck is Revelark. This is invaluable. It's the top of your pod chain, but you can get any piece of your combo you lost, sometimes multiple pieces. It's a great way to protect yourself in case something terrible happens. Plus, do you know anyone who would mess with the giant flying light bush with angel wings? Yeah, me neither. Sideboard time, four Thoughtseize. They come in against combo and control. Pretty much hoses all those matchups. Two Dismember comes in against Twin, eats all their creatures. Next, Entomber Exarch, similar to Thoughtseize, great against combo. Harmonic Sliver, mirror match for days, also affinity. Kataki Wars Wage. I mean, read it. Come on. Obstinate Baloth, amazing against Zoo decks, affinity, pretty much anything hyper aggressive. It gives you a decent amount of breathing room, plus provides you with a nice attacker and blocker. Great value there. Scavenging Ooze, Living End, Storm, anything with Snapcaster, Ooze can come in against so much. Just listen to your heart. Sin Collector destroys Storm beyond reason. The guy is just a nightmare for that deck. Don't get me wrong, he's also great against almost anything else that runs blue, but especially Storm. Ah. The card doesn't even go to the graveyard. It's exiled. Even worse for the Storm player. Slaughter Pact. When you just can't kill Deceiver Exarch enough times. It's also pretty great against high priority creatures like Tarmogoyf, The Use, or Dangerous Pod Targets. Thrun the Last Troll, surprisingly amazing against Blue Moon. The deck doesn't have a real good answer for it. They can't burn it out, they barely run any creatures, Spell Sky can't block it effectively, it's basically Thrun versus Batterskull. I like it. I know I went through the deck and the sideboard quickly, but we're talking about a deck with 25 one-ofs in the main and sideboard. If you want clarification on anything, ask in the comments and I'll help you out, no worries. Now that that's over, Birthing Pod strategy time. The deck was extremely well positioned at this tournament and will continue to be well positioned until people build entire decks to destroy it. The reason for this is because it's super resilient to hate cards. The best part about the Birthing Pod combo deck is that it doesn't need its combo to win. It can just be a white, black, green, midrange beatdown strategy. Kitchen Finks, Linvala, Murderous Radcap, Revelark, Ooze, Voice. The deck has so many value creatures that fighting down the ground will be difficult for almost any deck. Playing Birthing Pod correctly takes time and experience. There's no way you can just pick the deck up and understand every little synergy. Knowing what you need to pod for at any given moment is an acquired skill, but there are basics. In a game, you generally know whether you're ahead or behind. For instance, you play a turn one Birds of Paradise and you're on the play. Unless your opponent outright bolts it, you're ahead, which means you want to be the aggressor. One of the most interesting parts about Pod is that it can take on so many different roles depending on the matchup. Against combo and control decks, you need to be the beatdown strategy. Getting your combo off won't be easy, but getting a couple creatures out and swinging shouldn't be too difficult. Against hyper-aggressive decks like Affinity, you need to play to stay alive. They will board vomit. It's what they do. Get some Kitchen Finks out there. Try to make favorable trades and stabilize. In this situation, you're the control mid-range deck. There are also matchups against decks like Zoo where you just need to be bigger than them. This is where Gavany Township becomes a dream come true. Over a couple turns, you can make your hierarchs and birds into monsters. It's all about playing control early, then super aggressive late. These are just a few basic examples of the different kinds of things you should be doing with Pod. The main thing to take away from this video is that Modern really is a diverse format. That's the reason Pod does so well. It matches up against most any strategy decently well. You do have trouble game one against things like Affinity, which are just insanely fast, but post-board you have a much bigger advantage. If you're playing against Pod, it's hard to shut them down completely. The best thing you can do is take out their mana producers. The longer you keep them off of workable amounts of mana, the better off you are. If you don't have early removal of some kind, things are going to get tough for you. That's just how Pod works. Pithing Needle and Graph Digger's Cage are both extremely disruptive to Pod's game plan. I'd consider running both in multiples going forward, considering the popularity of the strategy right now. One video is not enough to go over everything about Malira Pod. Again, if you have questions, comments, concerns, anything, leave a comment below and I'll respond as best I can. Malira Pod isn't the easiest deck in the format, but it is extremely fun and if you can afford it, I'd recommend you at least try a Birthing Pod variant. They are insanely fun to play. We hope you enjoyed this deck tech. Remember to vote below on Facebook and on Twitter for what format you want us to deck tech next week. The choices are Legacy, Budget Modern, Standard, and Budget Standard. 
As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Manosaurus, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.